Boxing King Media in association with Boxer. With me on Zoom, Spencer Fearon. Spencer, great to see you. Firstly, as always, uh, how, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good, you know. Even better for speaking to you, Rez. Major news have just broke literally, I think, about 2 p.m. It's 2.30 right now. Uh, Match and Boxing has announced that Connor Bend will be back in action, licensed by the Florida Commission on the undercard of Hitchens and Zapida. Uh, on the zone, just your immediate reaction. Um, apologies to Nigel Ben. That's my that's my immediate reaction. Um, <clears throat> it's a bit of a shock, but um, it's it's a kind of funny one because because there's a lot of great areas. Uh, but me personally, I'm uh, I'm actually happy that he's getting a fight. I'm gonna be real. Um, I'm actually happy he's getting a fight. But I'd like for everything to be cleared up over here in the UK, but it's not going to be. So, you know, he's he's a young man that wants to fight. And I think he's been given the opportunity now, so he's got to go do it. So, in a way, it's fair play to match him. But in another way, because there's so many great areas, I'd like for the light to be shone on those great areas and then, and then him take it on from there. That's what I would like. Spencer, it seems like a mixed reaction online on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people criticise Matcham. I've seen a lot of people commend Matcham for this. Um, as you said, there's, there's a lot of great areas. Um, where, where's Connor in all of this? Because you've spoken to his father a number of times uh, over this this last 18 months. Where's his mindset? He, he looks positive on Instagram and when he's posting on social media, but where is he in, in terms of his his physical attributes and his, his mental attributes? Um. But if you saw the thing that I posted about an hour ago, he looked pretty sharp on, on the pads uh, with Tony Sims. But he's always constantly training. So, you know, because he's always constantly training, then that's a good thing, right? He's always he's on it. Um, he's a kid that's always in the gym. Um, I just think, like, he just needs to fight. So I think it's more of that to, to kind of save his sanity, um, especially when he's, he's uh, been an adamant of his innocence. So I guess... Because you've been so adamant of your innocence, you're just sitting there, what else stipulation that you go all through? But he's thinking, like, I just want to fight. And he's not breaking any law out in America for him to fight out there. So then go and fight. But I do understand why there is mixed emotions and feelings from other people thinking, ah, oh, he is a drug cheat or he isn't, a, and all the rest of it. And you're saying, well, if you're not, then you're meant to prove yourself. But uh, I think they've proved themselves enough. But if it means that he got to go abroad to fight in America, um, I also got to say like it's a kind of it's a kind of sticky area for matchroom. And I've got to, I I still think like Eddie Hearn and 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 and, and the matchroom team should they should should be commended for sticking by their fire, you know. Even though people will say what are you talking about, he's going to need to sort out this and all the rest of it, but they still stuck by him. And I like that, you know. I like I like loyalty. Even in the the face of defeat, in certain things that you still show loyalty. So, you know, what I mean, salute to them, guys. I just want to quote a tweet that Dan Raphael put out, and he said the following, and I'm quoting exactly what he said here: "They can say as many times as they please, but Conor Ben has not been cleared of his multiple drugs test failures, has not had his cases fully adjudicated, and never served an official sus suspension." There's a reason he's not boxing in the UK. The Florida Commission is weak. That's his opinion. He's absolutely right for his opinion. Right? He's absolutely right. But here's a young man that believes that he's innocent uh, and has been given the opportunity in Florida because they are so weak, <laughs> as he's put it, for him to fight. So I'm not really... You know, like I said, there's, there's, there's a lot of great areas... And sometimes you want to sit down and think, are they running the mockery on a the sport then? Are our matchroom running a mockery on a sport, right? Because if it was if it was a if it was a Ben Shalom fire, right, or a, or a Frank Warren fire, I think we'd have heard a lot from Eddie Hearn. If that was the same same scenario, different promoters, I think we'd have heard a lot. But what I can say is this: is like <clears throat> I believe Nigel Ben when Nigel Ben says that. My time limited, mate. I believe him, right? I'm going to be real. I believe the guy. Maybe I'm just that kind of naive, but I still do believe there are certain 
principalities that should have been addressed, but they weren't. But you know what? It is what it is, bro. It is what it is. And we shall see uh, what happens from here with his career. Spence, you did say that Connor's been through all the processes. Let's just break this down from Connor's perspective. Obviously, we know we were, he went through that the whole WBC process. Although the WBC is not a a governing body, it's a sanctioning body. They didn't clear him, but they just gave him a a reason. There was a reason given for why they feel there was uh, mm-hmm. ele- elevated levels of clomiphene. Um, he then goes through um, the NADP, who then obviously he was suspended by the UCAD. All of that was uplifted, so Connor was almost ready to go again. He was ready to commence his career mm-hmm. then uh, from the board's notification they decided to appeal now from connor's perspective do you also have to look at how long does he have to wait around and sit around he's been over a year that he was supposed to fight chris eubank junior or close to a year he's been out of the ring 18 months we don't know how long this appeal is going to take yes he's young but how much how long does he sit on the sideline when he's actually been there's no suspension it's lifted, he can carry on with his career. Well, you heard, um, if you, I reckon you did, when, when we did the interview with, with Nigel Ben, and Nigel Ben was saying, look, I'm the guy to America and fight, and, and that's what's happened, right? And so that's what's happened. Um, it's, it's, you know what, it's, it's kind of, it's a weird one. Like, when you have a relationship with people, especially like a relationship with his old man, with, with, um, and like I've said from the, from from the beginning, I don't believe that Conor Ben would knowingly and willingly cheat. I I don't believe that. <clears throat> but if something is being found, then you need to clear that up. But I know there's a lot of grey areas within that situation. I know there's a lot, and a lot of it hasn't come out. And I'm waiting for it to come out. So people, like, oh well, that's why you're saying you're saying things. But I'm not permitted to speak on these things. That's not for me to speak on. But I do believe that a young man should be able to 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 earn a living, um, but at the same time, there are stipulations that need to be addressed before you can go on and earn that living. And if there's a loophole in, was it the Florida State being very weak, then they've taken advantage of that loophole, and and and, and that's that. And he, he'll be fighting. So it is what it is. When I, when I spoke to Connor a couple of weeks ago, he said to me that he wants to fight in the UK. That's where he wants to fight. That's where his his loyal fans are. Eddie Hearn has also said on many occasions, we want to fight in the UK. The fact they're taking this fight away, do you feel like they know that this this appeal might just go on way too long and Connor needs to resume his career because he has been allowed, he's no longer suspended? Well, it's been over a year since he's boxed. So I believe now is... Uh, I would say, do he needs to fight? That's the bottom line. Is he he does need to fight? You know what I mean? I don't like. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to be um, uh, stupidly low. You know what I mean? Uh, and I, I also I don't want to be naive on certain situations. And there are there are a lot of gray areas. So if there are these gray areas. They they should be um, addressed, but. It's very, it's very difficult knowing the things that I know. Um, it, I mean, it's it's very difficult. But what I am saying is, I, I'm glad that he's resuming his career. But I just wish that certain things, like with the border control, were were taken care of. But as I said again, there has been a lot of gray areas. So let him come back. Let him fight. Let him get justified. But then also come back and address these situations that are over here without waiting. They're still pending. So that's what I believe. Spence, you said that Matthew maybe took advantage of a, a loophole in, in the Florida Commission. Well, they have done. Yeah, but but just because just because you can, does that mean you should? It depends on what moral standpoint you're coming from. Because I still get really deep on certain things. There's lots of people that have done little tax moves to evade paying the taxes over here that that uh, contribute to the fire brigade, the police force, and to the to the to the to the nursing and NHS. Lots of people have done that. 
you know what I mean? There are loopholes. There are loopholes in many things. So if they've taken advantage of a loophole, then, then so be it. I'm going to say again, do I think that Conor Ben will willingly cheat? No, I do not believe that Conor Ben will. I'm sorry, I've got a record. I said it for an agent. I don't believe that he's a cheat like that. If they, um, there are great areas that need to be addressed, which have not been addressed seemingly by what the British Border Control is saying, hence why uh, they they went against, they appealed uh, um, the ruling. So uh, I think at the end of the day, you know what I mean, um, justice um, overrules, overrules, overrides everything. And hopefully in this case here, that justice will be will be, will be be served. At this present moment, the young man's fighting on, on Saturday night. I wish him all the best. I want him to, to put in a spectacular performance um, because I believe that he needs to. And then we just take it from there and we see where his career will end up. It's exciting times simply because we're looking and saying, well, where is it going? But then also... My stance is this, if somebody is willingly a drug treat, and I've said this on many times, willingly a drug treat, that you should be banned for life. Not no five-year ban, all the rest of it, you should be banned for life. Because I know of many boxers who are walking around on their heels right now. There are, I know loads of professional fighters who gave their, their, their literally their, their well-being for the entertainment of the public. And now, these same men are they're not in the best of conditions right and i don't believe a lot of these guys went up didn't go up against drug streets so could you imagine someone going up against a drug cheat somebody who's been taking something to give them more endurance for them to fight harder you should be banned for life and i don't care if you're my friend or anything else you should be banned for life but yeah, again, I'm going to say this again. I don't think that Conor Ben willingly cheated. And I hope that Conor Ben gets a spectacular win and and, and then can continue to to progress in his career. Spence, appreciate your time. Yeah, we look forward to some comments from Conor and Eddie, uh, hopefully today uh, or tomorrow. And yeah, we'll catch up with you very soon. Thank you very much, my bro.